On March 16th, steelhead fishing reopened on the Matau River. I mean, they usually open it at the earliest, uh, mid-September to early October. And that's, that can be the best time, but right now in March can be really good too. Uh, there are a lot of fish uh, that don't come in the river early on. They wait out in the Columbia and then it's getting closer to spawning now. And so you'll get a, a flush or a pulse of fish coming in the river all at once. And that, if you're out there when that's happening, it can be very, very good. Bob Jadiff with Washington Fish and Wildlife is the district fish biologist for Okanagan County. Then hopefully it'll run I'm guessing it's going to run for at least another week, could be longer. I mean, typically the season ends on March 31st, but um, it may be closing a little sooner than that. It just We monitor the fishery on a daily basis, and so when we reach our take limit, then, uh, then we have to shut things down. Greg Knob at the Fly Fishers Pro Shop in Winthrop receives an increase in business during these few weeks that the steelhead season reopens. I'm going to show you a few bugs that we're using right now to fish for steelhead uh, this spring. A uh, real popular bug right now is our uh, stonefly. This is a Copper John version of the stonefly in black. Um, if you look on the snow, you'll see these little bugs crawling around black, and that's the black stonefly. Really popular bug to have in your arsenal. Setup I picked was my nymphing setup. It's similar to what I use for trout this time of year. Steelhead do tend to like trout flies, so. I'm going to use my stonefly uh, nymph setup on the fly rod right now. I'm going to try to uh, handle them as little as possible, just because they're the ones that we want. They're the ones that we want spawning. Now, if this was a hatchery, I'd be doing everything I could to land him and to, um, to, 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 to harvest him. Any steelhead that has an adipose fin uh, must be uh, released unharmed. There we go. There he goes. Uh, we have a mandatory uh, two fish retention on all adipose clipped steelhead. Those are hatchery origin steelhead. And what we'd like the anglers to do is to really concentrate on removing those fish, which means that if they go out and they fish and they're lucky enough to catch two adipose clipped hatchery origin steelhead right off the bat, then they're done for the day. They cannot continue to fish. And the whole basis for this fishery in the Methow and, and also in the Upper Columbia in general is to remove hatchery origin fish. And that allows the more hatchery fish we remove from the population, the higher percentage of natural origin fish are on the spawning ground. So that's kind of the, that's the main focus of this fishery is to remove those hatchery origin steelhead adults. You know. so just, just switch the flies. Give them something else to look at. The other one that's kind of <clears throat> unknown, it would be the chronomid. This one's called the white snow cone. Very popular right now. We have a midge hatch in the water, and uh, the fish seem to be keying in on that. The department does a sampling of the fish, the, a proportion of the fish that go through Priest Rapids, usually in, um, in the fall when the steelheads start returning. And then we can get an estimate of what, what uh, numbers of fish are being um, allocated to the Methow, to the Okanagan, to the Wenatchee. And then based on those uh, allocation numbers, we can propose to open up a fishery. So it won't be next year. I mean, typically the season opens in October and, and so that's kind of all based on our sampling at uh, Priest Rapids and then also some of the sampling that we do at Wells Dam too. Well, it's a tough balance. The fishermen want to fish. The fish and wildlife want them to fish, but they also want to protect the fish. So, uh, you know, 
they're in a really they're in a really tough position about how how do they keep it open without affecting the wild fish too much but there's a delicate balance like how many wild fish can you affect while getting those hatchery fish off the spawning grounds or get them before they get to the spawning grounds is uh, that's the delicate balance and then Washington Fish and Wildlife you know they have to apply for permits and it's really not up to them they might say they recommend it and they might write a proposal but then it's really out of their hands at that point and so we ask them as guides hey when's it gonna be open and they they can't really tell us you know they say we're hoping this time but it doesn't always happen and the fishermen get upset because they are wanting to get out and fish which is understandable they've been doing it for years you know this winter I you know it was closed down for a couple months and I, I was really wanting to get out but you know protecting the wild fish protecting the wild fish and uh, we want seasons to come so I'd rather have a little less fishing this year than uh, have no fishing in years to come earlier this season we had to close it down because we were getting close to our take limit on uh, natural origin fish i'm gonna hold it up but i can't take it all the way out of the water okay it's a wild i'm gonna release her it's a female Another variation of the stonefly, which we call the egg sucking stone here, um, actually looks like a, a stonefly that uh, has uh, attached itself to an egg and is eating one of the fish eggs because the fish are, are spawning right now or getting ready to. Oh, oh, oh. No freaking way, man. This one's a wild um, male, it looks like. At about 26 inches is really about our average, I would say. Beautiful color this time of year. Off it goes. Uh, Frenchie, which is a, a caddis type fly, uh, again with the egg on the front, kind of uh, attracting both the egg pattern and uh, the caddis um, pattern right there. And the purple burger, a color that we use a lot for uh, steelhead in here, is a, a, a stonefly that has some purple in it and a little sparkle. Very popular. And of course, the classic uh, egg pattern, which this uh, mimics the color of the steelhead eggs <clears throat> that uh, they're laying and will be laying. Uh, some of them are actually starting to come out of them. Um, and so you see whitefish eating these and a, some cutthroats eating them. One thing you will notice, these are smaller than most steelhead flies that you'll find, especially from the west side. Uh, it just happens to be that the fish here are keening in on uh, smaller uh, bugs than they do on the west side. So in combination, a great combination would be an egg sucking stone up front and then tied on behind that about 12 inches could be uh, the chronomid here. You always want to use your biggest fly first and your smallest fly second. You can't judge it by one day, uh, bottom line, because anything can happen um, probability-wise. The other day, when I was out with my brother, four of four that we got in the net were hatchery. Today, we didn't get any hatchery yet, but, uh, you know, statistically, I think there's, uh, there's quite a bit. I and mean, I, think, I think it's important more now than ever to have the river open because a lot of those fish are not catchable until this part of the year and that uh, in meetings that we've had with fish and wildlife that's you know, been their opinion and ours is you know if we if there's any way to keep it open um, or have it be open at the end so we can pull some of those fish out then uh, yeah, that'd be better for the the wild fish uh, escapement goals and spawning goals
you really want to hold them solid so there's a call it an inelastic collision and a nice rock i'm gonna hit kind of just in front of the gills right here a few nice quick whacks double check you know it's a hatchery that's it we just caught a 28 inch hatchery female steelhead um, how I caught it was on a nymph setup. I wasn't set that deep, probably about five feet to the stone fly, and then I had another uh, foot and a half to the, the bottom fly, but it did bite the stone, just like the first fish of the day. Um, they tend to like that up here. It's a good year-round fly to use, uh, pretty basic. I use it almost every river I go to when I go fly fishing, so... Yeah, that's, uh, that's, what it, that's what it bit. Pretty quick fight. And uh, nice quick uh, hatchery fish to get. My name is Bob Jetta. My name is Blaze Rude. My name is Greg Knob.